Hi there, it's Chrissy again for part two of New Parent. So we talked about newborns and some of the developmental stages and what your considerations are with newborns. Let's go on from zero to three months. Yes, there are a lot of changes between newborns and zero to three months. Um, so one of the first things is that they might might be settling into some regular sleep and eating habits. I wish I could say that your three month old will be sleeping through the night, but I had children that were not sleeping through the night past one year. So that's a little scary, but uh, it was a truth for me. Okay, um, maybe it'll, it won't be the same for you, fingers crossed. So they will start to con uh, get some head control. Like you can even see with this baby here, if I were to hold it up, eventually the head falls forward, it'll flop side to side. Their neck muscles need to strengthen, so we're gonna support the head as much as possible, but we can provide them opportunities um, to sit up if we are giving them additional head support. And you'll know when your child does that, um, but maybe think, you know, think about putting them in apparatuses before they have head support that has the head support for them. So a car seat does, um, like a baby swing will have head support, a high chair will not because they're sitting full formed and then their head will fall. So think about, you know, a jumper sounds really fun, but for a newborn, their head is just going each way. And we'll talk a little bit more about shaken baby syndrome, some of the problems that can happen if we don't um, support and care for the head. Um, the babies will have visual skills. They'll start to see less shapes and blurs. My children's eyes actually would still cross um, sometimes between two months and three months. So know that that does happen and it's, it is normal up until they get their eye muscles ready. Um, they can be soothed by cuddling, holding, and they enjoy listening to talking and singing. So this is actually one of the most important things you can do with newborns. I, sh I am sure my neighbors thought I was a crazy person when I had newborns in the house because I would be just me, a baby, and I would be talking and singing and looking around the room and describing things all the time. Look, mom's gonna go get some coffee right now. Isn't that good? Coffee, yum, coffee. And I know it, it's maybe not your cup of tea, but if you want your child to be conversing with you soon, if you want their verbal skills to develop faster, the more language in their home, the more likely they will pick up on them. And then another thing you can look into if you're just interested and you don't have to go get a certain specific book, but from what we know about child's development is that their hand coordination will happen before they can verbally speak. So one of the things that I would do when I was giving my child a bottle or breastfeeding, I could, before I did that, I would say something like eat milk. And that way later, I, and I would see it with my children, they would sign when they wanted to eat or when they um, needed to do something else. Another one I did was change diaper, change diaper. So I would tell them what was happening visually, visually and auditorily for them so that they could implement that later. All right, they will also smile and like human contact. Um, they will gain control of their hands. It's real. I thought it was always really good when my children started pointing. That was another good way for us to communicate before they had verbal skills. Um, they might swipe at overhead objects, so that's why you see the um, play mats for children. It's good for them to get their crawling skills and also use their hand control. Um, they'll develop some sense of self-awareness, and then they will also own, cry. They will communicate mostly by crying. So think too, crying is is not great um, i've had many videos interrupted by crying children because i have three crying is is an uncomfortable experience but that's the that's your child's only way to communicate if they are uncomfortable if they are wet if they're hurting if they're sad and sometimes even children can just express a very large feeling of emotion by crying so I think it's best to respond to your children when they're crying, but then also realize, let's talk about some other ways that we can help them later. And one of the ways that we can do that is by really increasing their verbal and, and communication skills early, earlier rather than later. So from three to six months, this would be, you know, 12 weeks and up, you're recognizing familiar faces and people. So again, think too, if you haven't been away from your child for a while, send a picture to your caregiver or your significant other, whoever that child's with, send a new picture. If you have the ability to record through United Through Reading 
or if you are able to send a video, that's a good time to do that as well. Make sure that you ask the caregiver to regularly speak about you and let the child know who you are. Um, they will begin to vocalize, like one of the things that <laughs> always kind of killed me was my children would say dada before they said mama, and it didn't make sense to me because I was their primary caregiver, so <laughs> it bothered me, but children will say like ba, da, and ta, a lot sooner than they will other words like ma because that's a harder vowel sound to say. Um, so think too, they'll have like their little bank of vocabulary words, maybe around three to six months. Um, they'll be able to sit up with support and they'll be able to show some of their other emotions other than just happy when I'm eating, crying whenever it's time to go to sleep, those kind of emotions. All right, six to nine months, we're talking about being able to sit unsupported. So that means that you can actually sit them, prop them there, they can stay there for a little while, and they might begin to crawl. Now before the six to nine months, actually even so young as after the child loses the umbilical cord, we can put a child on its back. And that is called tummy time, some kids hate it. You'll wanna make sure that the baby's face is not directly into the floor, um, and then, they will start to develop their crawling muscles and start to build some strength through the tummy time that they have. Um, they'll start with push-ups and then they'll try and get on their hands and then push their knees up underneath them. And then right around the time they start having their hands and their knees and they start rocking back and forth, they're gonna be off to the races pretty soon. Um, with crawling and all of that, just realize tummy time is really important. And I also say plan for that to be a regular part of your day. It's easy, especially when we're busy, to put our babies in swings, car seats, um, other places that hold children, strollers. Um, but think too, they, they need to have that tummy time and they need to have time to learn how to use their legs and roll and explore their environment in a safe area, okay? So think too, if you haven't had time to baby proof, again, new parent support can help you out with that. But one of the best ways I think to baby proof is get down in your home and crawl and see what you can see. If you can see cords hanging down, if you see um, electrical socks, outlets that are not covered, those are concerns and anything else that might be like a sharp corner for a child. Um, my home looked different when I had crawlers um, than when I had walkers and then later whenever I had older children. So if you have to move things around, it's temporary, um, but think about having a sp safe space for your child, okay? They'll start to grasp some small objects. So think too about toys that would be um, appropriate for them. Nothing that would be small enough to fit in their mouth. Nothing with a sharp corner. Nothing that would, um, if they were to hit themselves with it, would be a blunt object that would hurt their head. So think about having like a toy area for them with uh, approved toys for them that's, that are safe for them. They'll be aware of others and then they'll start teething, which is another fun part of children. Sometimes the teething comes along with a fever, sometimes not, but they'll start to get little teeth that come in and let, we need to find some ways for them to uh, appropriately teeth. Some children will start to bite around this age, which is also really fun. My children have drawn blood from biting during teething, which is not fun. It's not, it's not one of the things that I saw whenever I thought about having a baby. Uh, so they have some nice gummy chews. There's some things that you can put like in the refrigerator that are cold that will help um, watch out for or gel because that can also coat the baby's throat and then they might choke. So it's not, I'm not saying don't use it. Ask your doctor, your doctors, your, um, the entity that will decide, but they'll probably recommend some kind of teething um, apparatuses for them. All right, I'll check you back from nine to 12 months and then some other tips.